This is a podcast of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego. To learn more about how you can support Scripps, visit us online at scripps.ucsd.edu. So far, 2008 has shaped up to be one of California's driest years on record. Even when the current drought cycle shifts, climate change and a growing population suggests that the way we use water will never be the same as it was. The oceans are the ultimate reservoir of water for society and could provide a solution to a growing crisis. Only in the last 50 years has the removal of salt from seawater become an economically feasible means of providing drinking water to large populations. Scripps has played a role in the development of several methods, including the one considered the most commercially viable, reverse osmosis. Today, more than 10,000 desalination plants bring water to countries in the Middle East, the Far East, and Europe. But before California turns to the oceans for help, the state is creating standards that balance human needs with those of the environment. Questions need to be addressed before the ocean's faucet can be turned on. What do we do with the extremely salty water left over after desalination? How much damage does the intake of large amounts of seawater do to marine life? How much of a carbon footprint does desalination require? Two Scripps oceanography scientists, Scott Jenkins and Jeff Graham, are consultants to Southern California desalination projects, including one located 20 miles north of San Diego, proposed by the firm Poseidon Resources. The researchers are lending their expertise in coastal oceanography and marine biology to Poseidon as well as public agencies interested in the technology that could rescue California and the thirsty West. I think across the planet, for the most part, in many cases, the important steps in ecological impact of desalination have not been taken in terms of uh, assessing the effects, assessing the impacts. And when you get, begin to talk about some of these very large plants like presently operate in Saudi Arabia or that could potentially operate along the coast of California and that now operate in Japan and other places, uh, the way and the manner in which the ecological effects of the discharge are dealt with has to be done in a way that conserves the environment. This is what the responsibility of scientists are, uh, is with respect to consulting on these issues. I, in particular, work on uh, several aspects. Uh, first of all, I've done new hydrodynamic modeling of the dispersion of the brine plumes that are discharged from proposed desalination projects. And I've determined the trajectory that these plumes will take uh, when they're discharged into the nearshore waters and the levels of uh, hypersalinity that may occur in these plumes. And uh, I passed that result off to my colleague, Dr. Jeff Graham, who determines their potential impacts on marine organisms. The important point to start with is that the salinity of the ocean in the area around the Encina power plant and all through the Calif southern part of the California current is 33.5 parts per thousand. We know that from measurements on the pier that go back almost 100 years. So we know this pretty well. And uh, what we also know is that if we were to see a, a power plant develop a desalination facility within it, which is what Poseidon is proposing, then there would be a doubling of concentration. You can do the algebra quickly and you end up with one part of 60, 65 parts per thousand and dilute that by X number of parts of 33.5 parts per thousand, you can quickly come up with a ratio, usually about five, where you can dilute the discharge salinity from 66 down to about 40. And if it gets down to 40, this is about the range where we can begin to say that, well, if the water enters at 40 parts per thousand and it's quickly diluted by ocean currents, then it's going to be down to within a very tolerable range by the organisms that experience it within a few within a few hundred feet. In the case of one Poseidon project, a proposed facility would use the existing intake and discharge infrastructure of the Encina Power Station in Carlsbad, California, but only in the short term. The power plant could be decommissioned within 20 years, and when it is, a new set of environmental issues will arise, especially in the areas of entrainment and energy consumption. Well, largely, they're uh, ingesting eggs and larvae, and these are uh, creatures that would ultimately grow uh, some fraction of them into adult 
fishes and, and other types of marine organisms. So if they are killed in the process of entering a desalination process, uh, there is a certain productivity that has been foregone that has to be uh, somehow made up. And that's what this mitigation issue is all about. Uh, the reason the mitigation issue is so important is it bears such a high cost and uh, the financial feasibility of some of these desalination plants uh, could be jeopardized if the mitigation uh, should become too large. We're all experiencing now this tremendous increase in the cost of, uh, of fuel products and whether we use electric power generated from hydroelectric dams or electric power generated from, from power plants to to pump water to Southern California, it's going to have to be pumped. So the cost of this water coming to us is going to go up. Uh, similarly, the cost of making water using high pressure filtration is going to be expensive. And there's probably, a, a, we're, we're expecting there'll be about an ecological trade-off in terms of the carbon footprint by transferring, by just making the calculation that, well, if we supply water by desal, we don't pump that equivalent amount of water from from Northern California, then there'll be a trade-off. The scientists believe existing seaside power plants like Encina are currently the best choices for co-location of desalination plants. Some of the power plants may go away in the near future, but water demand won't. Researchers hope that when California is ready for desalinated water, nature will be as well. The population of the state's going to grow, the water requirements are going to grow, the water distribution problem, particularly in Southern California, is going to get more extreme and desalination is on the horizon. It's going to be part of California's water portfolio. And my hope is that uh, the regulatory process uh, sets the bar high with regard to protecting marine life and ensuring that best available technology is employed. Uh, but I hope that it is uh, rationally balanced against the societal needs for these projects uh, in the face of a building water crisis. This has been a presentation of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego.